Hey, this is my 2006 Acura TSX with the six-speed manual transmission, and it is going to be for sale. And uh, I'm in Ohio, and I have some interest from out-of-state buyers, so I'm gonna do a walk around and show all the flaws of the car. And if uh, you're also looking at buying a different Acura TSX, this might show you some of the common problem areas of wear that these cars get. So. Let's start with the exterior. Uh, the paint is the black uh, Nighthawk black pearl paint, and this car has a lot of highway miles. I used to drive this car 100 miles a day on the highway, and you can see um, the hood is probably the worst panel on the vehicle. It has a lot of really tiny uh, chips throughout where you can see it's, it's actually gone through the paint in some spots, almost like it's almost been just sandblasted by highway debris. Uh, the bumper was even worse and that was repainted back in uh, 2016 I believe and uh, it has accumulated a couple chips uh, since that time there's one there um, one here I think there's a big one over here yeah there's a kind of a bigger one up there and uh, I got another one right there good size but uh, the rest of the bumpers in, in good shape got another chip right there um, but the hood as you can see was not repainted. This is the original paint, and um, up close, you can see that it does have a lot of very fine rock chips in it. Um, a couple of these were bigger, and I put some touch-up paint on them, like that one right there. And these lights really help bring these out. Um, it actually looks a lot better outside in the sunlight. But there's one right there that I retouched. Just some of the bigger ones, just so that it wouldn't start to rust. So the rust of the exterior is pretty good. Um, there was a chip here in the fender that I touched up. Uh, there was a couple up on the roof, uh, right here, just from rocks flying up at me from uh, all the highway driving right there. And I would just touch these up. I know they're not perfect, but you know what? It's better than a rust bubble occurring because uh, bare metal was exposed. Uh, there was another, let's see, there's a scratch here on the trunk. Don't know how that happened. Um, I use a touch-up pen to uh, touch that up. And you can see, you know, when you're a few feet away, it's not too obvious, but when the light hits it, you know it's there. <clears throat> um, the rear trunk had the TSX logo over here and the Actor logo over there. One day I was washing it and I bumped the TSX logo and it almost fell off. So. I pulled it off and it looked awkward with just a logo on one side, so I put off the Acura emblem as well. And I have those and they could be reapplied with uh, double sided tape, but I think it looks pretty clean without it. And there's another little scratch right there. Uh, there was also one on the door and you can barely see it. I was almost able to buff it out. The light hits it just right, you can kind of see in the reflection there. Right there, you can see it showing up on the reflection of the uh, garage door track there. And I'm going kind of nitpicky on this here because um, I hate for someone to drive, you know, multiple hours and see the car and expect it to be a pristine show car when it's really, in reality, been a daily driver since 2012. Let's see, what else? The wheels um, have also ha have some wear and tear. This is the worst wheel. Um, you can see there's a little bit of curb rash on the outer edge there, uh, right here too. Um, and you can see there's you know some dirt and staining. I've really never went through the time to do a thorough cleaning on these wheels. You know, I use them for uh, winter driving most of the time. Some curb rash right there too. And uh, I put my BBS wheels on for the summer. Um, there's a little scratch right there. I didn't even notice that one. But you know, this is up close, nitpicky. Half the stuff I don't even notice when I'm just walking around it. Uh, here's the front wheel. Uh, this one does have a little, I guess it was a chip here that salt must have got under and started to cause it to kind of bubble up. But you can see, uh, you know, typical 150,000 mile uh, exterior on this vehicle. Better than a lot in, in this area. You know, there's no uh, rust on the, on the doors or the rear quarters or anything like that. Um, I did do some repair work. I'll show you that. 
but you can't really see it right now, but I took the uh, inside plastic liner off and repaired uh, the inside of the wheel well because there was some surface rust and some rust starting to happen um, back in here. And uh, I have a video to that and I can put a link to that video where I did re that repair. And that was on both sides. And that was just preventative maintenance because uh, you know I have seen these cars rust in that area. I've also seen a lot of rust at the bottom of the passenger door. And I did have a spot on the inside where it did start to show some rust. All right, we got light on now. This will show up better. Um, underneath this door, there was some rust that started, oh, probably about five years ago, up here toward the front. And it was just barely starting. So I ground it all down. I applied some PR15, and as you can see, that area is rust-free. Um, all this here, this is fluid film. And what fluid film is, is a, uh, it's a rust sort of inhibitor that sort of like oil, but it's not oil, but it's similar to it, that you can spray over your car, um, on the other side, inside the doors, areas that are prone to rust, and it sort of creates a bond onto the, the metal and the paint, and it helps prevent uh, salt and moisture from corroding that metal. So it does have some of this sort of greasy texture uh, on it, especially like in the door jams there, under the car, uh, some of the around the trunk areas and the wheel wells. Uh, that's just to help prevent moisture. You can see I've got all down the uh, inside of the door jams here on the door. And it's not pretty, but you know what? It stops rust, so it's worth it. And I do that before every winter. I always have on this car. But the previous owner who owned it the six years before I did, um, he never did any of that. So there is some rust and corrosion underneath. The headlights on this car were hazed over, um, so back in 2016 when I repainted the front bumper, I also refinished and recleared the headlights, and they look just as crystal clear as they did the day I finished them. I used a uh, 2K clear, and they are staying perfectly crystal clear. The haze is not coming back, unlike some of the cheaper headlight refinishing uh, products and kits that are out there. 2K clear is the only way to go. Uh, looking up at the front bumper here, there is a little flaw in the paint from when the bumper was repainted. Um, it was a little bit of a, of a run. Not that obvious, but it is there. The mirrors as well have been um, sort of debris blasted over the years from the highway driving. You can see there are some little fine uh, rock chips on the mirror, passenger side. Same for the passenger side. There's one that I actually put some touch-up paint on because it was a big one. Um, the hood is by far the roughest area of the vehicle paint-wise. There is, I don't know what that is from, tree sap or something on the hood. But, you know, unless your claws up on it, you don't really notice any of those flaws too much. Looking at the paint on the rear bumper, you can see, um, especially for the trunk opening, there are some, there's a little nick right there, and some scratches just from loading cargo in and out of the trunk. Uh, there was a chip right there that was retouched, but the touch-up pin uh, was actually a little bit off, even though the color code was correct. It was a little bit more bluish, so that's why that's there. That's an older chip. I did get another touch-up pin that was just regular black and that matched the factory paint much better. Uh, coming around back here, there is a scuff on the rear bumper. I don't know if you can see it because the plastic underneath the paint is also black, but right there and right there, I don't know what happened. Just noticed that one day, it could be the kids, it could be something in the parking lot, don't know. But that's about it for the flaws on the exterior of the car. Overall, it's in great shape. 
for 150,000 miles, uh, being that it was mostly highway miles. All the lights work. There's no electrical issues at all with this vehicle. That was the HID uh, headlights shutting off because the car is not running. There we go. Flip those back on. And these headlights are amazing, by the way, at night. A nice, sharp cutoff. Uh, one more thing, the passenger side door handle has sort of like a wear through the paint on the top. And that's from, I think it's from people with rings opening and closing the doors. The rear passenger handle has a little bit of that as well, right there. The driver's side, front, and rear door handles are both okay. They don't have any of that. We're gonna look at the inside now. Uh, first thing you notice when you open the door is there's a little bit of, I don't know what this is. It, it doesn't really come off. Um, it may just be like a clear coat over this silver that's starting to wear, but you can sort of see it in, in the right light. There's also some scuffs on the bottom of the door here, uh, just from shoes getting in and out. And I've got the light on my, my camera here to really bring out these flaws. Um, looking inside, you can see there's also some scuffs here. And I didn't really go through and armor all this or anything. This is how, this is how they are. Uh, these could look better if you took the time to put some sort of a dressing on there. Uh, the sill plate here has a little bit of, I don't know if it's surface rust, but something on the edge here, probably from just, you know, road salt getting in there over the years. Uh, the door hinges here do have a little bit of surface rust on them. Uh, so there's that bolt there. And you know, typical Ohio stuff. I've been since spraying them with fluid film to combat that and stop it. And that's what all this oily grime is again. Um, this one up here is, is all right. Check out the front, front hinges here. Fluid film on there once again. And there's a lower one, but all the jams and everything like that are fine and rust free. We'll look at the other jams really quick. <clears throat> yeah, just some dirt accumulation in there is all that is. But yeah, these are all, all clean here. Uh, bottom of this door, you can see there is no rust there at all. Rust free up here. Look at the driver's door. You can see the seam here. It's good. Uh, right there might be some future rust down the road. Looks like there might be a little bit of a uh, Separation at the uh, rubber seam. Here's the inside of the trunk lid. You can see there is uh, fluid film on that as well. And that's uh, prevented any rust from starting or happening. That's a clean edge all along there. Uh, inside the trunk is fine. Nothing going on in there. And there's no rust of any sort around the uh, seams or edges here. And again, this car's never been any accidents. Uh, the title is clean. It's never had any sort of body work uh, done on it. Here is the door jam of the right rear door. And we already saw this door earlier. Let's look at the front passenger door. Uh, you can see again, just like the other side, this lower hinge does have a little bit of surface rust on it. No 
rust anywhere else inside of the door jams. And let's see the bottom of the door. And up the side, and this door is clean as well. So that driver's side door is the only one that is questionable along the bottom edge. And like I said, there's nothing there that's visible, but you know, years down the road, uh, that could be the start of rust. But getting back to the interior, the leather seats are a common wear item on these cars. And this one's in pretty good shape. This is the driver, so it has a lot more wear than the rest. Um, this is the worst spot of the driver's seat right there. The rest, I would say, is all normal and acceptable wear. The steering wheel doesn't have any areas where the cover's worn through. You can see that's all nice. Um, the passenger seat has hardly been used. You know, it's in great shape. Um, the interior is fine. All the door panels, dash, nothing like that. There's no damage anywhere. Uh, the shift knob is in good shape as well. Even the leather on it is good. There's really no major wear and tear on the interior. Uh, the dash is fine. All the gauge clusters work. So the, the radio works well, the HVAC, heat, AC, all work fine. AC blows cold, heater blows hot. Uh, the only option that this car does not have is the navigation. So it has the standard radio, which has the six disc changer built into it. Um, it does have uh, optional, I'm sorry, XM, which you can purchase uh, additionally. It also has the auxiliary uh, input, which nothing's hooked up to it right now, so it's not letting me choose it. But when you do have something plugged in to the auxiliary uh, plug here in the center console, right under there, just an eighth inch jack, and here's a 12 volt uh, outlet as well. And use a charger or whatever to power your, your phone. Um, it will show up on here, and you can play music through that. Uh, glove box. I've got the owner's manual and records in the house. Show all that later. Uh, auto dimming rear view mirror. More storage up here. Uh, lights all work. I've never tried to program these garage door openers, but it has those built into it. You know, the interior, everything else is fine. It works. It's in good shape. There's one problem in the back that I want to show for sure. Um, this door broke once, the hinge inside broke, so I replaced that, but you can see everything works now. It's another 12 volt power outlet. Oh, there's the not an ashtray. And got some cup holders here. Um, showed you the inside of the lower section. There's the inside of the upper section. The nice thing about this is that the upper section has a little bit of a uh, hole here where you can run your wires through for your phone charger or whatever and they have them come out right here and then you're able to close this and just have your device sitting right here next to you without having to reach in here every time you grab it. All the seat belts are in good shape. No fraying or anything like that. No locking up when they shouldn't. Here's the driver's side. Uh, has heated seats Both sides work as they should uh, Cruise control works fine everything works fine as they should All the power windows work fine uh, Locks all work fine heated mirrors work fine the power mirrors adjustments work fine seat memory works fine There's no electronic issues of any sort anywhere on this car Which isn't surprising because it's a Honda not a German car. 
The transmission shifts absolutely perfect. I have never replaced the clutch and I doubt it was replaced before I bought the car. So as far as I know, it's the original clutch at 150,000 miles, uh, many of which are highway miles that may have something to do with it, but it drives absolutely perfect. The engine runs perfect as well. And uh, I'll get a separate video of that. I can't go for a drive right this minute. And here is the, uh, the cluster information that the, I think this started in 06, maybe 05, but you can go through by pushing the button on the steering wheels and see everything uh, statistic wise of your car. It shows your oil life, uh, your range, your average speed, miles per gallon. There is a scuff here on the ceiling um, above the passenger seat, right behind the sunroof. Uh, sunroof, everything works as it should. The vehicle stability assistance, uh, factory control basically works fine as it should. Never had any problems with any of those features. And the rear seat, uh, I had kids back here, so there's a couple scuffs here. Uh, one there, one there. Um, over here, this was on the car when I bought it. I don't know how it happened, but there's a puncture in the rear right seat. Other than that, uh, the rear of the car is in really great shape and really clean. All the floor mats are in great shape except for the driver's floor mat. And the TSX letters have worn off on that one. Um, there's what it used to look like. Let's look at the engine bay. This is the K24A2 engine, uh, 205 horsepower. And this engine is all original. Um, nothing's ever really had to be, have been done to it. I did replace the spark plugs and I replaced the knock sensor. I don't know if you can see it back in there or not. It was a tight fitting job, but I replaced those. Um, I did adjust the valves around 125,000 miles. That was the same time I did the spark plugs. I think the knock sensor was around 80,000 miles. And I just put in a new battery <clears throat> in April 2020. It does have a k and replacement air filter, and that is the only modification to this engine. Um, from having this front bumper apart, some of these tabs these clips broke uh, you can see missing one there missing one there missing one there uh missing three right there and i bought a bag of them off amazon they're here they're in the garage somewhere and i never really got a chance to put them on so if i find them i'll put them on if not you can buy a bag of them for like i think eight bucks so <clears throat> just want to let you know those are missing and uh you can see also the inner side of the hood has been fluid filled. Um, I did see, where is it? Right there. Just, I guess from years of, of this rubber seal rubbing on the paint, it did start to rust through a little bit. So I've been uh, fluid filming that area as well. Let's look down in here. Everything, everything in this engine bay is fine, but I did fluid film in here just to prevent any rust from starting. And I go and do this before every winter. But you, if you look down there, you can see there's some rusty bolts and some rusty hardware, some rusty hose clamps. But there is nothing structurally wrong with anything on this car in terms of rust. A little dirty, but you know what? It's not a show car, it's a daily driver. Uh, put some fluid film in there as well. Just keep that from ever seizing up. I had that happen on one of my old Civics one time. Um, I did have this out because I replaced the, or I'm sorry, I repainted the front bumper. And recently I also upgraded the fog lights to a uh, LED switchback. Uh, because when you have the LED, or I'm sorry, the HID headlights, which are about a 5500K temperature, 6K temperature, somewhere in there. The regular uh, halogen bulbs of the fog lights were kind of like an off-white, didn't quite match. 
So I upgraded those to an LED bulb and they have a driver inside as well. And what that driver does is it allows it to switch from yellow to white uh, if you turn them back off and back on. So they'll come on as white. And then if you turn the lights, the fog lights off and back on, they'll come back on as yellow. And each time you turn them on for the first time, they'll turn on as white. Kind of a cool little feature because I wanted yellow fog lights, but I also like the white. So I got the best of both worlds there. And I'll put a link to a video explaining more about that and how I did that and how it works. <clears throat> the front brakes were done, uh, brake pads were done. The rotors are actually original. And you can see they've got some, some rust on the edge. And uh, the calipers are also original as well. They work fine. Um, the rear brakes, I did those in fall of 2019. And that's new calipers, uh, new rotors, and new brake pads on the rear. This car is lowered on a uh, Kony suspension with ground control uh, coilover sleeves. Uh, they're the right way with some Konies, they're rebuildable. And right now they are coated. Wipe that off and these still look brand new under do drive this car in the winter. So these look like they're all gumped up and greased up, but it does preserve very well what's underneath and that's more important to me. When I lowered the vehicle, um, I wasn't ever really planning to go that low, but I did install an Engels. Uh, lower control arm kit and you can see there's one here and the other one is straight back right there and that allows for easier and more adjustment uh, of the control arms to get the um, camber and toe dialed in better everything else under here is original but you can see there is some rust here's the exhaust um, on the other side you know, there's some surface rust here and there. This tow hook has some rust on it. Here under the passenger side of the car, you can see there's some, you know, rust hiding here and there. Just from being an Ohio car. front also when I did the rear suspension I replaced the rear sway bar end links at that time the front sway bar end links are original and once in a while, if I go over a bump, I can hear making a little bit of noise, but it's nothing that's worth replacing yet, in my opinion. Up underneath the front bumper, when I was installing those fog lights, um, some of these clips broke off. Um, they get brittle with age, especially here with the Ohio winters, I guess. But I have some zip ties in place of some of those going across. There's one right there. And here again, you can see any rust might be happening up front. There's the front uh, compliance bushing. You can see it's not ripped or torn in any way. That's a wear item on these cars. Front axles are fine. It's all original OEM. Um, they're not making any noise or anything like that. Wheel bearings are all great. Um, I wouldn't hesitate to, to drive this car across country at any given time. This would be my most reliable vehicle and I've never had any issues with it. The windshield was recently replaced. The original one um, had a lot of rock chips on it from all the highway driving. I think there was like three or four. One was right in the driver's line of vision. So I went ahead and had that replaced through insurance. Um, it's a brand new windshield and it's the best it's ever looked. Um, here is the VIN. Just want to take note of that. It does also match the one here on the door jam. This car is all original. Feel free to Carfax that if you'd like. 
All four tires are the same. They're uh, Hankook, Ventus, V2s, uh, factory size, and those were replaced in the fall as well. So they all have excellent tread left. I won't go as far as to say they're like new because the little red dots have worn off, but these tires have a lot of life left in them being that they're only about six months old. So if you're a subscriber to the channel, uh, you know, sorry to disappoint you if you're a TSX fan, this car has served me well, but you know, with my family growing and me getting into different things as I get older, I need a bigger vehicle that can tow. So I'll show you the replacement for the TSX. So that is going to be the replacement, my new daily driver, a Toyota AV Series Land Cruiser. Options that the US ones never had. So I'll have some more videos coming up on this vehicle. But right now, back to the TSX. I'd keep the TSX if I had the space and uh, the money to do so. But as you can see, I've already got quite a few vehicles, and uh, one just has to go, and it's going to be this one. This is going to be a great car that I can sell to somebody else. This is not the last time you'll be seeing this car. I have a lot more videos to upload and to share yet. Um, so even after I sell this, there will still be more TSX content on the channel, including a full review of the 2006 Acura TSX to give an overall comparison of different years, uh, what was available on each year, some of the features that each year has, and some of the details of the car, sort of an overall review to give any prospective buyers an overview.